Hey guys, my name is Mahmoud. I'm here to talk to you about Chronometer, um, which is a system that we had to build at Blue Core uh, in order to uh, to do a distributed uh, ETL uh, steps. So a distributed cron for doing reusable ETL steps. Uh, to give you a little bit of a background about what Blue Core does, so we build uh, SaaS software. Um, it's a SaaS platform for uh, for taking automated decisions on very large data sets. Obviously, that sounds like something very abstract that is impossible to sell. Uh, so our first application has been highly personalized and triggered emails uh, for e-commerce. And uh, the demo that we usually show uh, is uh, what started as a QA tool um, that we had built in order to monitor the uh, emails that are outgoing from our system in real time to make sure that they weren't missing any images or anything like that. So this is a random sampling uh, of emails that are outgoing from our system right now. Uh, the point of this is to show you some of the brands that we work with, uh, but also to, to show that every outgoing email is unique. It has a unique set of products uh, based on the behavior of that customer or based on changes uh, in, in the catalog. So because our uh, customers are mostly large enterprises um, and, and we are a platform that collects uh, customer behavior in real time and also catalog behavior in real time and we collect a lot of analytics, uh, what ends up happening is a lot of times our customers want to get data out of our system or wants to give us some data. A simple example of this is uh, we send emails, so it means we need to maintain an unsubscribe list. Uh, so usually our customers have an unsubscribe list somewhere, it gets updated by their uh, other marketing uh, or email marketing providers, uh, and we need to sync that into our system, uh, say every day or every few hours. Uh, vice versa, we have a bunch of analytics data that we need to get into their Omniture, uh, and we need to uh, push that out to them in very specific formats. So uh, once we had about 10 clients, they were all asking us to either take some data from them or give them some data, and they each had uh, very different requirements. Sometimes we needed to get that data from S3 buckets, or sometimes we needed to get it from some uh, external FTP that they provide. Sometimes we had to encrypt the data because it has personally identifying information, uh, and sometimes they're able to handle uh, public key or asymmetric encryption, and some other times they can only do symmetric encryption. So we ended up with uh, an explosion of all of these jobs, and uh, each of them needed to run at different uh, at different frequencies, and um, and uh, some jobs actually take a long time to run. Uh, sometimes you have to download, you know, four gigabyte file and and decrypt it, right? And and you need a large machine for this. So um, we had to build uh, a system called Chronometer, and, uh, and to explain a little bit about what Chronometer does, there is this concept of a tick. Think of it as a hardware clock that ticks, say, every 30 minutes or, or every uh, 15 minutes in our case, uh, and we use that for synchronization. You can then define uh, schedules, um, and those schedules are for running uh, jobs that, that uh, shuttle data back and forth. Uh, and you can specify schedules either in relative uh, timestamps or, or absolute, right? So you can say every 24 hours, uh, which means you know every 24 hours from the last run, uh, or every day at 7 a.m. It doesn't matter if there was a previous run or not. Um, and then there is a pipeline, right? Uh, and a pipeline is uh, a, a set is described by a set of uh, steps that either uh, get the data or manipulate it. Um, and uh, uh, a step uh, is something that, uh, that can be a source, uh, or it can be a pipe, or, or a sync. So if you imagine taking files from an SFTP server and loading it into a database, um, there are multiple steps. So let's actually look at uh, some example jobs, right? So here's one that we run, run every day at 9 a.m. for one of our clients. Uh, we download a file from SFTP, decrypt it, unzip it, and then we run a MapReduce to transform each line to load it uh, into our data store, right? Um, another one is every four hours where we get data from our analytics database. Uh, we have to transform it into some format that uh, that, that an analytics provider like Omniture, Omniture needs it to be. Uh, we need to encrypt it uh, with a configurable public key, right? Uh, and then we need to put it in some unreliable SFTP that's, that's not managed by us. So um, as you can imagine, you know, something like putting it on an SFTP can be, um, you know, the connection can drop or, or you know, and, and we need to be able to retry that independently, right, without having to retry the whole, uh, the whole uh, pipeline. Uh, 
So the idea is that these uh, steps are, are reusable. So here is a sample syntax um, of a chronometer job. So the schedule here is, uh, is every three hours. Um, and the pipeline, so this is a YAML format. This is, uh, think of it as a JSON dictionary. Uh, here it has a pipeline, and a pipeline uh, is made of a, uh, it's, it's an ordered set or a, or a list uh, of, of steps. First one uh, gets a file from FTP, right? Uh, so that's the source. Um, and then we do a bunch of transforms on it, a bunch of pipes. We decrypt it, unzip it, uh, and then upload the unsubscribe, which actually uh, runs a MapReduce, right? So this is uh, the flow for, for, for how the data uh, uh, runs in, in Chronometer. So if we actually look at this job, um, you know, we need these steps to be idempotent, which means that um, uh, if you fail, fail midway, you need to be able to re-enter the step and, and not like screw things up. Uh, and they need to be fault tolerant, right? Like if I'm running this MapReduce uh, and some of the machines fail, I don't want to retry the whole pipeline. Uh, I want to be able to just retry uh, the, the last step or, or the medial step. Uh, and if you think about uh, very large files downloaded from FTP and decrypting them, you need to do that on a very large machine, right? But when you're running MapReduce, uh, typically you run very small operations and you can do that across uh, a fleet of, of very small containers, right? Uh, so Chronometer allows us to actually describe a, a cluster uh, as, a, as, as the point uh, of where to run uh, each step, right? Uh, so uh, the, the, the first step gets the file from uh, FTP, puts it into Google Cloud Storage. That's the equivalent, the Google equivalent of S3, of an S3 bucket, right? So each one of those steps uh, just needs to know how to read a file from uh, GCS, do some transformation on it, and then, and then put it back on GCS. And that uh, programming uh, uh, framework uh, allowed our team to actually scale the amount of steps that we have, right? So we have a bunch of sources, uh, getting files from FTP or S3 or even downloading them from, from a URL or, or uh, querying them from our own data store or from our analytics database. Uh, then a bunch of pipes, right? Like a lot of times you get uh, files that need, that don't have the correct line endings, right? So you need to do like a DOS to Unix transformation on, on that file um, or unzip it or even do a Python transform that allows you to do uh, you know, a script for, for how you want to transform the, the different columns. Um, and syncs, and, and this is where the data ends up, is uh, putting uh, data into S3 or, or into GCS or even an FTP that is run by us or run uh, by somebody else. So the idea is that you can uh, make these pipelines and configure them uh, by just putting a bunch of steps together and stringing them together. Um, and there's a programming model behind writing each one of these steps that allows you to describe what uh, of the named clusters that we have to run on uh, and what the retries should be in, in that cluster um, and what the, um, and, and, and it takes care of retries and, and all of that for you, right? So that we only have to worry about it once. So I wanted to show you a demo. Um, so, um, let's see. So actually, um, so actually for each one of our clients, um, we have a, a GitHub repository, a private GitHub repository where the files are stored. Um, so there is actually a chrono file here uh, that describes, uh, this is uh, one of our brands, it's a simulation that we run. It actually has a pipeline here that downloads a file from GCS uh, and, uh, and then runs a MapReduce on it, right, that, that runs the, you know, that, that uh, does some transformation. If I actually show you, um, we also had to build an integration uh, in our text editor in, in Sublime Text, uh, and the idea is that um, here you can write, you know, this is a pipeline where I'm doing uh, an FTP get um, and uh, decryption, unzipping, and then upload. Uh, and then I can actually validate this. I can validate that my YAML looks okay, uh, so this is valid. Um, if I try to like say I misspelled this um, and, uh, and I do validate, um, it actually tells me that this is an unexpected object, right? Um, and, and we have the same validation built as a, as a webhook on the GitHub repository itself, right? So it becomes hard to push uh, invalid pipelines or invalid steps into, into chronometer. 
Um, it even understands a bit of the syntax, right? So if I remove the source, uh, this doesn't make sense, right? What am I decrypting or, or unzipping? And if I try to validate this, um, then it will tell me that it actually needs, uh, needs a source, right? Um, so one of the cool things also it does that uh, when you do an FTP get and, uh, and this glob is, is, you know, it's a description of what files to download, if it actually, if that yields multiple files, it will actually paralyze the rest of the pipeline, right? So it would instantiate a bunch of other pipelines and, and do the decryption, unzip, and uploads uh, all in, in parallel right? across our distributed uh, uh, system. Um, and then it also comes with a, uh, with, with a UI, right? So, so uh, if you look at this job where um, we're reading this, this file and, and running a MapReduce on it, um, you can actually see this, uh, this thing here, which tells us about the schedule. I think this is a hack to make sure that it only runs once. Uh, Chronometer does not support a semantic for, for, just, running, uh, for just running once. Um, but you can actually see that uh, it tells you on this MapReduce how many of the lines passed, uh, how many of them failed, and what the success rate is, right? And you can actually define a threshold if 80% of my MapReduce failed, uh, Chronometer has semantics for uh, actually contacting PagerDuty and, and, and sending you a notification that some job uh, failed, right? Which is, which is quite important for, for business critical applications. Uh, so we started Chronometer uh, in, in late uh, 2014 is, is when the first version of it came out. And, and now we have, you know, about, uh, uh, like 2,000 or 2,600 jobs. Um, we've run three million of them thus far, uh, and we process about, you know, about one terabyte uh, of data uh, through chronometer ETLs uh, every day. And uh, that's it for me. That's awesome, thank you very much. So we'll do a couple minutes of Q&A. Uh, I guess first question is, you know, if, if uh, for maybe some of the more beginner programmers in the room, what's wrong with cron in the first place? Like why, what broke? What was the first thing that broke for you? Yeah, so, so the problem with, with something like cron, so we actually run on the Google Cloud Platform and uh, there, are, there is a, like a, a, like a, a regular cron definition. It's very error prone, right? So it doesn't support uh, like the, the friendly uh, scheduling like syntax that we have. Uh, and it also requires that you redeploy code, right? While with, we needed something that allows our team to reconfigure um, a, a job in, in Sublime Text, push it to GitHub, and automatically have it like be picked up and, and run by the chronometer system. Um, and the other problem is it also makes it hard to, to parallelize and choose which cluster uh, each job uh, you know you needed to run on. So for that, we that's why we had to run uh, our own. Right. Got it. And what uh, what systems do you use to alert and alarm when things don't happen? Uh, so usually, like it either goes directly into uh, into PagerDuty, uh, or sometimes we push statistics into an amazing service called StatHat, uh, and uh, and and then we have. Uh, stat hat push alerts into pager duty if if the if like the graphs don't look right. Okay, cool. Uh, questions? Yes, sir. So uh, the data driven event on Tuesday, um, we saw something similar from a company called uh, Enigma. They're calling it parse kit. And one of the things that they had that I felt really great was they could set debug breakpoints in these. ETL pipelines because I never write them right the first time. I'm wondering if that uh, chronometer. Yeah, so, so the way we've been doing uh, debugging thus far, I believe that uh, because each ETL steps, step writes a file into GCS, we can actually go and, and look at the output of that file and, and see what happened. Uh, for something like a MapReduce, um, we're actually able to set breakpoints in, in production in, in the code. It's, it's something that uh, Google Cloud Platform actually provides, uh, or we just look at the, at the output. Uh, so that, that's how we've been doing it this far. Actually, a bunch of people from, uh, a bunch of core contributors to Chronometer from the Blue Core Engineering team are, are here today. Cool. Go ahead. Yeah, so why don't you just use like a field script for continuous integration software? Basically, that's all the time for programs. 
Yeah, so repeat the question if you could. Uh, the question is why aren't we using a build system or a continuous integration system to do something like uh, chronometer monitoring or, or, or kick off the I would say just the whole setup of like running a couple of breakpoints and having some better. Yeah, I think I think uh, perhaps this is something that we that we should that we should try for, for debugging. Uh, I think that's a good idea. All right, any more? Cool. Well, we'll call it a wrap. Thank you very much. Thank you. That was awesome.